morning. Good morning. Major friends, happy June 6th, first June service of 2021. What a beautiful day you've been given by the Lord. We're here to celebrate, worship, give gratitude, and be encouraged to go out there and be lights of the world in Jesus' name. And Richard is going to be our worship leader. Richard has some announcements. Good morning. Good morning. The first thing on my list is um, a memorial service for Don Easton will be held in the sanctuary on Saturday, June 12th at 10.30. As a sign of an acknowledgement and support, 2021 major graduates and graduates of family members are cordially invited to our June 13th service of blessing. We also have the Women's Guild Hobie card sale. They're $5 for a seven inch Hobie and can pick, be picked up at Carl's Corner. See Joanne and Sylvia for tickets. Needed donations to help defray the cost of the flowers purchased to help beautify the outside of the church for the summer. If interested, see Peggy or Dennis Krim. We also have our Oops Fund. Anyone interested in donating to the replacement of the exterior light pictures, please make a check payable to the Church of the Major and note in the memo, Oops Fund. And uh, uh, this is something I just want to say. Um, my building is now open for visitors. Masks are required inside the building, but not necessarily in the apartment. 90% um, of the people there have been vaccinated. She just hasn't opened it without masks. You have to wear a mask. And um, Eleanor, um, keep sending the cards. She loves your cards. I mean, she just can't say enough. And uh, if you would like to visit her, you can now. That's all I have right now. Yesterday I received a call from Karen Applegate. Um, to let us know that Betty, her mother-in-law, uh, has passed on, and there will be a service for Betty this coming Wednesday at the Kong Funeral Home at 11 a.m. Uh, both obituaries for Don and for Betty are in the paper for today, and we extend our greatest sympathies and love to our families. Thank you.
have you seen the miracles of every day creation in our world. We have enjoyed both the bright sunshine and the gentle rain. We have marveled over the beauty of the flowers and the complexity of our pure creation. Make our hearts ready to receive your word for us, that we may go forth from this place ready to joyfully serve you all of our days. Amen.
From our lives, you can fashion the most delightful miracles that can serve you through acts of mercy and kindness. Free us, Lord, to receive your blessings, and having received them, to find the numerous ways in which we can serve you. Heal our wounded hearts, hear our cries, come to us and bring us to your table. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The promise of abundant praise. My dear ones, do not doubt God's power and might. It is God who has created all that is. It is God who has called to your hearts and spirits. God is with you. All is forgiven. You are free to be born anew in Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Amen. Everyone, amen. 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 Listening for God's words, scripture, song. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decree that has surpassed your fame. When I call, you answer me. You greatly embold me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lonely, lowly. Though lofty, he sees him from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindict me. Your Lord, your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Jesus accused by his family and by the teachers of the law, Mark 3. Then Jesus entered the house, and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, where they said, he is out of his mind. And the, and the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Bezebo, by the prince of demons, he is driven, driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him, and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were, were saying, he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brother, he, he asked. Then he looked at the seated, seated in a circle around him and said, here's my mother and my brother. Whoever does God's will is my brother and my sister and my mother. Say I am 
sometimes too with the things he says and does because it's not the way we might handle it in, in our world but Jesus invites us to walk with him to talk with him to sing with him to dance with him and I think that's what's going on in this scripture today but it's reflected in the lyrics of this song in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth and Bethlehem I had my birth I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me, and the dance went on. I danced for the Sabbath, and I cured the lame, the holy people said it was a shame. They whipped, and they stripped, and they hung me on high, and they left me there on the cross to die. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance today. beginning of a beautiful summer and we're so excited 
to dance for the Lord, and to stand with the Lord. So let me talk to you a little bit about what that means, and you certainly have already been living it, but I'd like to share it with you. The word stand can seem like an easy thing to do, to stand, I'm standing. There are a lot of definitions to the word stand. It can be an adjective, I mean, it can be a noun, it can be a verb. To take a stand would be a noun. To have a lemonade stand. To go to the grocery store and stand in line is action. Standing is actually much harder than walking if you have to do it for a long time. Have you ever had to stand for a long time? I know for me, when I was a child at our services, we had to stand for lots of parts of the service. And I used to get faint all the time because I just couldn't seem to stand for a long time. Now, so far up here, no fainting for me. But that's because I also move around a bit. Jesus is about his Father's work. And because of the way he's talking and the unusualness of his message and what he can do, he can cast out spirits, dark spirits from people. There's this whole uproar about where is he getting his power from to the point that his family is sent for. Now, you know my children come here occasionally. And if I was doing something here that you had to get on the phone and say, you better come get your mom. <laughs> we don't like what she's talking about. We're concerned. And they came to the door to, to get me. I would be like, why have you called them? At the same time, I wish they were here. But in this case, it was a very strong moment where the people in this environment felt we have to st stop him. We have to get him. We have to save him in a way from himself. Now what's interesting about the story is Mary, his mother, knew he was called to this Messiah ministry. Why would she come and say, Jesus, come out here with me? <sighs> Think about that for a little moment. Why would she come? If you were doing what you thought you should do in your life and you felt that your mother approved of that mission and she showed up and said, come out here now, stop. Most likely it would be fear. Your mother would want to protect you and say, something about this isn't working, something about this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Come Jesus, Yeshua, come. And she didn't just come by herself, she came with his brothers and sisters. Of course, various Christian denominations discuss, and theologians discuss, whether Jesus had brothers and sisters. Many denominations say, no, he did not. They're actually talking about his cousins. Other denominations say, yes, he did have brothers and sisters. But whether it was actual brothers and sisters or his cousins, or extended family, the fact was Mary did not come by herself. She came with the group. Now I personally have eight brothers and sisters, who most are married with children and grandchildren. And if they all came out here, it'd be about literally 65 people saying, have Mary come outside. Now the power of that, that Jesus knew his mother his brothers and sisters and their cousins were there saying, come out. He knew the heat was going up on this ministry. And he knew that there was something, a danger coming. See, we know what happened to Jesus, don't we? We knew that he had to die on the cross and be raised up. Did Mary really understand what was going to be asked? It was hinted at, but did she really know? And when the heat and pressure started pushing on her son, she's like, 
I'm going to go get her. In the same way she pressured him at the wedding, when he wasn't started with his public ministry just yet, and they were running out of wine. And Mary said, Jesus, they're running out of wine. A very interesting thought that that was his first miracle was to create wine, huh? It's interesting. But it was to protect the family, their, their friends and family, because the Jewish wedding lasted several days and there were different toasts that were part of it. And at that time, Jesus said, Mom, I'm not ready. It's not my time. And what did she say? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and she said to the servants, bring him the jars of water. Do as he says. So when I was a young you know, girl and I read that and he starts to say, who are my mother and my brothers and sisters? It was hurtful to me at the time. Because why would Jesus talk that way? He's supposed to be loving and kind and compassionate. And why would Mary and his family say, bring him out here? Thinking, they're, they're painting like maybe his family thought he was losing it. When Mary was the one who believed in him from the beginning, who said yes to the angel Gabriel, who encouraged him throughout his childhood, who took care of him, who cared for him even after Joseph, Joseph, his protector, passed on. And now she's coming to say, bring him out here to me, get him. The price was going to be high, and she started to feel the pressure. I in no way think that Mary thought that he was going off the deep end. It was just more of a feeling of the risk is high. We have to get it. They were standing outside. It says clearly Mary and his family stood outside and called for him. There must have been quite the hubbub that they couldn't get inside. But there were people there that were listening to Jesus. And he wanted them to hear what he had to say. What he had to say was transformative, was revolutionary, was risky. <clears throat> but he knew, he knew what he had to do. I've spoken to you before about the two schools of Christology, descending and ascending. Descending means that from the moment he was conceived and born, that the being of Jesus of Nazareth knew he was the Savior, he was the Messiah, he would have to die, he would rise again, that he knew all of it. So even though he was a baby, an infant, it descended upon him and he knew. The other view of the theologians is ascending, which means he grew into awareness each day of where he was going and what was expected. There are good reasons to look at each school of thought. Which one? We're not certain. Maybe, I'm sure in many ways he had a real understanding of who he was, but there was a coming into the fullness. And I feel that this story shows that for Mary, she was coming into, her understanding was ascending, coming day by day, moment by moment, and a part of her wanted to protect him. But even in that moment, when he so deeply loved his mother and his family, he had to say, no, Mom, I can't come out. How about the people here that have been soldiers? And when you had to go, didn't your mom say, I don't want you to come, don't go, right? But you said, I have to go. And trust me, even if your mom said, go ahead, in her heart, or she'd proud of you, of course, but she didn't want you to go. 
don't be mistaken, Mary and his family supported Jesus in every way, but they didn't want to lose him. Resurrection wasn't something they grasped yet. So the people in the room were listening and receiving from Jesus and being healed. And he was giving all that he had, and yet some were saying, oh, he, he drives out, you know, demons through Beelzebub himself. And Jesus said, well, that makes no sense. Why would Satan drive out Satan? Makes no sense. Jesus knew what he had to do in that moment. He also knew who was going to pay the cost. Besides himself, sorry, you know me, it's my. <laughs> he knew who was going to pay the cost his mom, his family. Any of the veterans here that went, that you knew the cost, you might not come back, but you had to go. Your country was calling you, higher power was calling you. God would hopefully protect you. And those who have returned, yes. And those who didn't, God took them to himself. But this really was the day, I truly believe, that Jesus took a stand and said, it's going to be dangerous. My own family is coming here to protect me. But who is my family? Not in a mean way, not in a way to push his mom away or his cousins, brothers and sisters, but to say, I'm here to serve you equally. You are all my mothers, my fathers, my brothers, my sisters, my cousins. I, Jesus Christ, have responsibility to each one of you the same as I have to my own biological family. What a statement that is. Isn't it? And in many ways, when we join a church family, it is a calling to that. We are a church family. Brother, sister. We say brothers and sisters in Christ. That really means that. And Jesus exampled that. Was it hurtful to Mary? Was it hurtful to his brothers, sisters, cousins? Absolutely. If I ever went somewhere worried for my son and I said, Michael, come out. And he said, well, no. And then people said, your mom's here, your sister's here. And he'd say, well, who, who are my brothers and sisters and my mother? But you see, there was also that moment where child became teacher to parent. It happens. Every now and then, you know, my daughter, my son too, will say, now mom, let's think about this. They're in their 30s now, and they know lots of things, and they worry about me. What I mean by this is, Jesus had to say, mom, I love you, but you have to understand, I'm here for everyone and you're going to have to let me go. <clears throat> we never let go of our children, whatever age they are, but in that moment, Mary knew, I'm not in charge of the trajectory of this anymore. He'll set his own pace. He'll set his own goals. My time of protecting him has come to a close. So the title of my sermon is, Stand with Jesus. And Mary did stand. <clears throat> and the family, they stood outside. It doesn't say they went in and pulled him out. Once he said what he had to say, there was an understanding. And I'm sure there was a moment, like I say, I've heard, and I'm sure there were conversations after that. Some of the apostles were his cousins. He didn't abandon his mother. 
He just wanted them to understand. And he wanted the people there to understand his commitment to them. I'll take it all the way to the mat. You've seen the sayings, family is everything, family first. And Jesus was saying, I stand with you. I'm here for you. As long as I have to stand, I will. There's a popular song called, I'll Stand By You. And I just want to share a few lyrics. I'd love to sing it for you, but I haven't had time to practice. Oh, why you look so sad? Tears are in your eyes. Come on and come to me now. Don't be ashamed to cry. Let me see you through. Because I've seen the dark side too. When the night falls on you, you don't know what to do. Nothing you confess could make me love you less. I'll stand by you. I'll stand by you. Won't let anyone hurt you. I'll stand by you. So Mary and his family were required to stand by Jesus. It can seem a quiet activity, but it took everything they had to say, okay, whatever, whatever it is, we'll stand with you. The people inside the house were receiving benefit of Jesus being there. So, yes, they stood by him, they listened, but they were receiving benefit. It's always easier to stand by someone when we receive a benefit, isn't it? But when Mary and his family stood by him, it was at great cost. He was asking them, follow my lead. Love your neighbor as yourself. Lay down your life for your friend. And get around me and behind me to help me bring God's kingdom and salvation to all the human family. So my dear friends, we are called to stand with Jesus. I will stand by you. Will you stand by me? I know that you will. You are beautiful, beautiful people. And Jesus loves you. And so do I. Amen. Amen.
And Linda, if you can come forth with our offering. Heavenly Father, we ask you to accept these gifts that we offer. We stand with you, ready to serve, and we give all that we have with sincere hearts and enthusiastic spirits. Please accept our gifts today in Jesus' name. Amen. My dear ones, let us come to the Lord now with our prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving prayers of gratitude, and prayers of request. So first, let us come forth with a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, we are so grateful for all the blessings of this life, the people that you have placed in our life to love and be loved by, for the great faith that you have given us to learn and understand who Jesus Christ is and the courage to stand with him. In our journey of faith. We are thankful for the blessings that are coming forth now that we still haven't seen but know will come to us, our loved ones, our world, our church, our community. We are grateful for it. Now our prayer of thanksgiving and gratitude, knowing how much God loves us to send Christ to us and to give that special, compassionate, unconditional love. We thank you, Lord, for that great, wonderful gift and for all of his earthly family who supported his ministry. We're grateful for this church, Lord, and for all those who have participated from the beginning back in the early 1950s to this day now, we are grateful, Lord, and we hold up all those here present, those who are with us but not here physically today, and all those who helped create our church and sustain it, that are now in the communion of saints. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, now we have prayers of requests. So place your hand on your hearts, my dear ones. And who do you find there? Who is on your heart today? Whoever it is, and it may be more than one, see them surrounded with the love of Jesus Christ. See them sitting with him, speaking with him, being loved by him, and you're there too. And light bulbs start to go on, and things start to change. And hope is renewed. And we lift those prayers up to you, Lord, knowing divine intervention and breakthroughs are on their way. And perhaps there's something for yourself, a fear, a need, a sadness, Whatever it is, bring it to the Lord in prayer. And know that as difficult as this is, it is good to ask for help and support on the journey, and it's good for you to be of help and support to others. And my dear ones, also we have a special memory today we have flowers in honor of Shirley Caldwell, our, one of our founding members, whose celebration of life was held yesterday for memorial service. And we have these beautiful flowers in honor of Shirley and the beautiful lady she was. We all know her and remember her with great affection. Her children spoke of her, her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, of the love and devotion she had to them and to Jesus, her Savior. Sam sang his eyes on the sparrow, which she requested. And she, she's with us still in her heart through the community of saints and the Lord Jesus. 
And the other flowers here are for happy, wonderful occasion because Sam and Susan are celebrating 48 years of marriage. On Tuesday, and tomorrow is Sam's birthday. I'm gonna sing you happy birthday later. And I think it's a big one. Um, they're all big, but I think this is a big one. Yeah, a little bit. And um, so we're grateful for the opportunity to celebrate. And also, there's other wedding anniversaries. I know, Nancy, you have a wedding anniversary recently with your husband. 24 years? 25. 25 years. And every, everyone may have different things happening right now. So we're grateful for the celebration and for the ongoing relationship we have with our MCC Church and our St. Jude's. And we pray that all of us can continue to live and love and walk together and stand together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. And I also want to say in prayer, we lift up the soul of Don Eason and Elizabeth Applegate, as they have gone to their creator, to be with Jesus, in their passing in the last week. Two beautiful, beloved people of our church. Amen. And now, our sacrament of communion is a sacrament of grace and open to all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord God, we ask that you would bless our wine and our bread, our elements, for communion, that they might be made ready and blessed to share the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear ones, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he gave it to his apostles, his disciples, and said, take this and eat. This is my body, which will be given up for you, that you might have eternal life. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, he poured the wine, and he said to his followers, take this and drink. This is my blood, the blood of eternal life, that by my shedding, my life, will open the gates of heaven forevermore. Drink, and do this in remembrance of me. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thee. Heaven and earth are praising thee, O Lord, most high. And now, my dear ones, I invite you to the table.
that though you stay seated in this moment and are with us in a special way, you will receive the body and blood of Jesus with your little individual blessing there. So let us take the bread. Take and eat. This is the body of Jesus shed for you, doing this in remembrance of Jesus. Amen. And now we take the wine. We promise to stand with Jesus and drink in memory of him. For by drinking his blood, we are given the gates of heaven. Death is no more. You are invited into the everlasting life. Take a drink. And before we have our unison thanksgiving, just take a moment to thank the Lord for your life, the love you know, the faith you have, and just the totality and richness of your life, sorrows and joys. And Lord, we thank you for the body and blood you give us, strength for the journey. Together, our Thanksgiving prayer. Lord, how wonderful you are to invite us to your table. We could ask for nothing better, the bread of life and love, the wine of forgiveness and grace. We can do nothing less than to share with others the abundance of joy within us. Amen. My dear ones, it's time for me to commission you. I brought the Bible out because we're also accustomed to using our paper bulletins that are lovely and that Carol works very, very hard on. But I just wanted to encourage you to read the Bible. I'm sure that many of you do. I like this one because, guess what? Big print. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to take time this week to read a little known and not often spoken a part, part of the Bible, the Acts of the Apostles. It's stories of where the Apostles took a stand for Jesus. They risked much, they healed many, drove out many demons. We're called to the same. Now it seems daunting, but we are called to that. So we, we hold the Lord God with us always, in our hand, with the Bible, in our minds, and in our hearts. So I encourage you to go out and be people who stand with Jesus, loving others, going farther than you think you can, and knowing that every stranger you meet is a potential friend and a child of the Most High God. I know how loving you can be, but I know sometimes it's a challenging world. But I still call you to that ministry of the moment. And now, let me give you a blessing. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. So my dear ones, 
wherever we are. God is. Where God is, all is well. Celebrate the month of June. Today would have been my mother's 101 birthday. She's with me, I'm certain, through the communion of saints and Jesus Christ, her Savior. Go out and find peace and happiness, knowing that life is beautiful, even with the sad parts. You are beautiful, and once again, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Amen. Amen. Amen.